Now what is up my fellow prod coders or welcome to this video and today we will continue working on our session implementation. So there's one thing we still need to do or we have a little situation over here. So let's just assume that we are looking for an email that doesn't exist. So for example my email at example.com. So let's just assume it's not in our dummy database, right? What happens then is that the value of this statement here will be undefined. And then we will not just return undefined, but we will actually return undefined, which is wrapped inside a resolve promise. <laughs> and the reason for that is because this function is marked async. As soon as you mark a function async, um, if the return value of that function is not a promise, then the return value will be automatically wrapped inside of a resolve promise. And that is a problem because we don't want to return something like this, uh, undefined. We actually want to return a rejected promise. Because if we were to interact with a real database, then we would like to return a promise. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, it's actually not so hard. Uh, we can just say const user equals users and then uh, email. Okay, and then we can say, okay, if uh, the user is truthy, so that means if the user is not undefined, we just return the user. And otherwise, we will just return a rejected promise. So we'll just say user not found. And by the way, here we are exploiting the same mechanism I mentioned earlier. So if the return value is not a promise, it will be automatically wrapped inside a resolve promise. So theoretically, we could also write promise.resolve user. But we don't really need to. Like, uh, let's just use user. Uh, in the second case, though, we want to explicitly return a, prom a rejected promise, because otherwise, as I mentioned before, uh, we would return a resolved promise. And that's not what we want. Cool, so now that we have our data access object ready, I think we can actually continue with our service implementation. So let's go inside our service and let's import our data access object. So let's say const, um, yeah, maybe user, user data access data access object equals require and then data access object user okay that is pretty good and what we will also need is we will probably need bcrypt in here so i'll just include it now that we're doing the imports anyway nice so the first thing we need to do is we need to find the user by email. And the way we can do this is we just say const user equals await user data access object dot find user by email and then email. Now there are a few things here. So for one, we are using await inside of our function. That means we need to declare it async. And because we're using await inside of our function, we should wrap it inside a try catch. You should always do that. Like if you're using a wait, always surround it with try catch. Good. Um, yeah. What else do we need to do? Um, if we get our user, let's just assume everything works, then we need to compare the password hashes. And the way we can do this is we can just use our bcrypt library. So we can say const uh, match equals and then await um, bcrypt.compare and then password user.password hash. Now the interesting thing here is that here we pass the plain text password and we are passing as a second parameter a password hash and that is by design. So basically uh, we do not need to uh, hash our plain text password um, before we pass it to bcrypt.compare. Uh, we pass it to bcrypt. 
start compare. I just write a comment here, right? Because otherwise uh, it might be hard to understand if you look at the code later on. And there's also another thing is uh, bcrypt.compare uh, will always return a resolved promise. Um, in case the password hashes match, it will return true. If the password hashes don't match, it will return false. So it will always return a resolved promise with a Boolean value, uh, value indicating, indicating uh, whether uh, the password hashes, hashes match. Right? So I just want to have this comment over here so everything is clear. Nice. And let's just do one thing. If um, you recall, like the object we return is the password hash, the roles and the ID. And actually, we don't want to mess around with the password hash over here, right? Because we just use it for login, but we should not, you know, return it to anything else, right? Because it has fulfilled its purpose. We just use it for login and that's it. So let's just write a little if statement here. So we'll just say if match, then we return, um, let's say ID, user.id and roles is user.roles, okay? And otherwise, if there was a mismatch, then we can return promise.reject wrong password. Now maybe let's say wrong username or password. So actually here we know that it was the wrong password, but we just want to have a generic error message, right? So that if an attacker comes to our system, then it's not clear which part was wrong. And um, now the only thing we still need to do is we still need to handle this uh, case over here. And as I already said, this thing like will always resolve. So if we end up here, then we always end up here because the user was not found. So what we could technically do is we can just say return uh, promise.reject and then we can say user not found. Because we know that if we end up here, then this part uh, returned a rejected promise, um, not the second await. Okay, so this kind of uses a little bit of internal knowledge. Nice, so I think that looks pretty good. I think that we should be done with our service implementation. And now that we have our service implementation, let's just move on with our controller. So first of all, let's import our service. So const auth uh, service equals require and it, I think it was in uh, dot dot service, right, auth. And then what we can do is um, we can delete these comments because we don't need them anymore. And then we say try const uh, user equals await auth service dot login. And then we pass the email and the password. Cool, and since this can throw, we surround it with a try catch. And uh, let's, first of all, let's delete this stuff over here. And we also need to make this function async as before, because inside here we're using try and catch. Good, now one thing here, like just for debugging purposes, we could just console.error, the error. By the way, one important note, don't use console.log or console.error in production because they are synchronous and they block the main thread. So if you repeatedly use console.log, it might slow your system down, especially if you by accident load, uh, log some base64 content because you're dealing with files or something. So for this tutorial, yes, uh, we can just leave it in here, but I will just make a comment and say, in pro, do not use console.log or console.error, um, use a proper, use a proper uh, logging library um, like wins, at least that's the one that I recommend. Okay, um, now, we have, now that we have our user, we can attach it to our session. So we can say request.session.user equals user. And then we can say response.send status and 204. 
right? Because there's nothing we need to send. We just say, yeah, success, no content. And in this case, um, we just return response.status, um, I would say for one and then JSON and then the error. Yeah, maybe let's do a return here as well. It's not really required. Yeah, actually we could leave it like this. Yeah, it should be fine. Okay, oh, there's a little typo perform over here. Just saw it. Okay, so that looks quite okay to me. So I think that we can actually start testing this now. Oh, I think there's just one more thing um, I'd like to mention. So if we say request.session.user, then this means that we are we will attach this user object. So that means uh, the thing with the ID and the roles to our session. And that also means that this will eventually end up in our Redis, right? So just for your information or just for the understanding, this will be stored inside Redis and we will fish it out of Redis every time we make a follow-up request. I think there's just one more thing we need to do. We had this uh, dummy implementation here where we check for client ID because here we say, okay, if you don't have a session or if you don't have a client ID, then we block you. But now, since we are using the field user, we need to say here, user. Okay, and let's just uh, try to run this. So npm run dev. Oh, there was some problem. Oh, I think I made a typo somewhere. Where is it? Uh, in auth? In service. Oh, yeah. I think I accidentally made a little... Oh, yeah, it must be bcrypt. Okay, let's save this. Maybe that's the only typo we have. Okay, so now we are running. Cool, so let's try this out. If we pass the proper username and the password, then nice, then we are logged in. Like, just to make sure that this actually works and that this is not a cookie uh, we get previously, let's do it again. And let's go for our profile endpoint. Bam, nice. And you see here we are returning um, the user or like everything that we basically have inside of our session. Like in production, you would of course not do this, but this is just for this tutorial, right? You never return the content of your session, obviously. Okay, so let's try out something else. Uh, let's maybe put like a wrong password here. So like this, bam, wrong username or password. That looks good. And what happens if we use um, like unexisting, not existing email? Yes, then we get user not found. Nice. So that looks pretty good. And I see we already reached 13 minutes. So I think I have to finish the video off here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And by the way, I'll put a link in the description down below. If you're interested in uh, having a say what I will publish next here, then uh, leave your email there and I will send a poll around from time to time so you guys can decide. Again, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.